and welcome to um, our talk on microstream versus Hibernate and empirical comparison. Um, I learned yesterday or the days before, and we also talked to the uh, the people at microstream that they moved to the Eclipse Foundation, and now the title should be um, Eclipse or versus Hibernate and empirical comparison. But we tested, and all the data included in the presentation uh, was a prior microstream uh, release. I think microstream uh, six. So the experiments were done last year. Um, my name is Johannes, and also my colleague Sebastian is here. Uh, if you have questions or want to have the presentation slide afterwards, um, contact us. Talk to us. Um, the foundation of this talk is a scientific publication. We are from the University of Bamberg. Um, why we looked at microstream um, is within the motivation, but if you're interested in the complete content, the, the paper published uh, last year at the scientific conference, you can download the preprint via this QR code or go to the microstream um, website and they have a possibility uh, to download the paper there. The code is um, at Benedict's uh, GitHub page, so if you're interested, um, have a look. So the agenda for this talk is, what is microstream? You may all know now, so there is a lot of merge during the breaks, um, and also the microstream uh, guys do a great job at their booth. Um, but I want to uh, shortly introduce what microstream is and why we think it's worth looking at it. Then we, I want to share the methodology of this experiments uh, with you, so the benchmark selection and the setup, uh, some results, so the bookstore performance demo, uh, that's also the numbers you see at their screen, um, so implementation was done by microstream, and we did another implementation, a wholesale supplier based on a, a benchmark specification from the 90s, TPCC, um, at, at the university. And then I want to discuss, based on three questions, um, first microstream versus JPA, then one major limitation or um, well, challenge, um, concurrency control, threats to validity, um, as for all good scientific work, uh, thinking about the validity of your, your stuff, and in the end, conclusion, future work, um, and a summary. What is microstream and why it's worth looking at it? So at their web page, they say they are Java native object graph persistence engine and implemented a fundamentally new serialization concept. So we have the Java object graph and can directly store the data which are in, in RAM um, to disk without the mapping. And the motivation for the paper was their marketing claim at the website that they are proven to be a thousand times or even faster than a uh, comparable setting with Ibernate and EH Cache. And we wanted to check, is this really the case or is it only a marketing claim? And under which circumstances does this claim hold? And also we looked at um, machine utilization and that was kind of interesting but more on this uh, during the results. The problem we saw uh, and we still still see um, a few, in, in some extents, literally no built-in concurrency mechanisms, but there are structured approaches to deal with this um, limitation or challenge. The tech stack. A uh, typical JPA solution is you have your application, so that's a picture from the microstream web page. Then you have your heap, the Java um, objects. Do you see my mouse? Yeah. Um, then this object relational mapping framework, in our case, Hibernate. Um, and then the relational database, typically. With microstream, you all may know this when attending uh, the talks. Uh, this object relational mapping layer, which is uh, time consuming. Uh, you have to think about how is my business model 
ideally represented in a relational model um, and have some limitations on the implementation side. Uh, this is all gone. You can directly store um, the object graph and do whatever you like in Java. Uh, some examples which are hard to do um, right or good in, in JPA-based systems is, for example, inheritance, polymorphism. That, that are hard tasks. Um, that's all built in, so to say, in this new serialization concept. As I said, it's a scientific um, approach here. We had research questions, and Benedict especially had during his master uh, thesis. And the first one was, is MicroStream really a thousand times faster than comparable uh, technology stacked with JPA and Hibernate? The second one was, how can we achieve, when there are no built-in concurrency constructs, how can we achieve um, implementing a mutable data model with the microstream and memory data engine. That was kind of tricky and we needed three attempts to do it in a structured approach and do it right. And the last one was what are potential usage scenarios uh, where, uh, where we see microstream beneficial um, compared to uh, JPA-based persistence. Before talking a lot about the results, First of all, the methodology. Why another benchmark? I already said we implemented one um, at our uh, group. So the situation was um, there was an, applica an application, the Bookstore Performance Demo from MicroStream, and we used to repeat this performance claim a thousand times faster, um, they stated on the website. The use case of this Bookstore Performance a uh, demo application is selling books. And the uh, complete data model or the com all the transaction, uh, transactions are read-only transactions. So, and all the model classes are predominantly immutable. So there is no state change. And no state change and concurrency issues is a perfect fit. There are no concurrency issues in an immutable data model. The demo data for um, both um, experiments are created upfront, but in this bookstore performance case, there was no data added. It's an immutable model. Um, and we thought, yeah, MicroStream, they are quite nice. They responded to our emails when we uh, needed feedback or help uh, when started implementing our own application. But the bookstore performance demo application is vendor dependent, yeah, they implemented them in their own um, labs and they may have strengthened positive aspects uh, and high drawbacks of their solution. And this motivated us to implement our own benchmark application based on a specification, TPCC from the 90s. And the idea back then was to benchmark relational databases. So uh, the domain model was focused on how relational tables have to be structured, what are the primary keys, compound foreign keys, etc. We adapted this specification to an object-oriented model, added one or two new transactions, and also uh, removed uh, some fields from the database layout. So we came up with the following setting. We have this bookstore performance demo application um from the microstream github repo uh, we have a jpa uh, implemented so there is a jpa implementation and the microstream uh, sync implementation so with java uh, building concurrency cr uh, constructs and then we have our wholesale supplier application a mutable data model and we also implemented the jpa case uh, the micros and two microstream cases. The thing was, um, since there are no built-in concurrency constructs, MicroStream had a hackathon, um, I think two or three years ago, and one of the solutions was a Java consistency store um, to execute transactions, check is, was one of the uh, winners of this hackathon, and we thought, okay, we implement 
microstream and use this transaction, external transaction system. And then we implemented our own uh, wholesale supplier application with Java 1.0 constructs. Synchronize blocks, wait, and notify. And that was totally fun. Uh, so I spent two months on implementing this, and it was total fun in my leisure time. That was super. Yeah? So the first attempt was uh, horrible. Uh, we had a lot of performance issues and bugs. Um, and then we came up with something different I want to present to you. But that was uh, really nice. I enjoyed it a lot. So in the end, we ended with the seven uh, bookstore performance transactions and five wholesale supplier transactions. And what I want to stress here are these mutable transactions, post new order, post payment, and post delivery. And here you see the share. So most of the transactions we performed in this wholesale supplier application um, added or changed data in the data solution. And what I want to focus on um, are these three transactions. And we see in a minute why these uh, uh, three. Our experimental setup, um, and that's important for the conclusion. Uh, what, what is necessary to remember then is on H90, a typical um, desktop machine, four cores, i7, um, 32 gigabytes RAM, um, nothing special. We deployed uh, the application, so the bookstore performance application or the wholesale supplier application. This is meant by this OLTP, transaction processing app, and the corresponding um, serialization solution. So either the relational database in the JPA case or um, microstream, but there is no, as we know, there is no database in microstream. Microstream is um, running within the JVM. And then for, yeah, get for isolating um, the app as much as possible, we have another machine where we install JMeter um, and send requests to our application and we use net data for getting uh, machine utilization, CPU utilization, memory consumption, etc. Um, I don't can recall all the numbers of CPU utilization and memory and this stuff. Uh, read up the paper. Now it's only 20 pages. Um, nice to read. I, w I, I would recommend after the exhibition. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Um, um, before going to bed. So I already stated this, isolate, we isolated the OLTP app as much as possible. And in our uh, use case, we use JMeter for generating the load and configure 10 users in parallel doing sequential work. So they had a, f a few tasks in, in a specific order and they performed these tasks uh, whenever the previous task uh, returned. And what we did is we measured the user perceived performance, so the time between request and response arrived by, by my um, JME in within the JMeter user and also the server processing time within the service method. So log the start and end time and um, computed the difference. Why I want to look at um, bookstore performance um, transaction number six um, is the huge speed up. So we experienced on the server a speed up for this transaction 400 times. And MicroStream did even better in another experiment uh, I want to share later on. Um, for the others, MicroStream still um, is faster, a lot faster, uh, but not a few thousand times, um, tens, hundred times. Um, but I want to look at the, 
uh, at this sixth transaction and I also want to show you code. What's maybe interesting is to explain the other columns of this table. Um, the requests here for JPA and microstream, so we had a fixed experiment duration and since the JPA uh, transactions took longer to execute, there are less transactions within the same time frame compared to microstream. And here we see uh, the median in milliseconds, server processing time. When we look at our wholesale supplier, our mutable data model, um, the table is a bit different, a bit more complex. As already said, we have three implementations. Um, the first one here is JPA. The second one is Jackis, this transaction store. Um, and the third one is um, our sync implementation. So the Java 1.0 concurrency construct um, thing. The first row of data is um, the server processing time and the second row is the user perceived um, response time. Uh, so including round trip time, um, middleware, framework handling, etc. What is interesting uh, for the first uh, transaction we experienced um, also a speed up at the server processing time um, more than 260 uh, times faster compared to uh, JPA. Um, when looking at the, the user perceived um, performance, when, when also looking at the numbers, um, so less than a millisecond on the server to process the, uh, the service, uh, the transaction, it's clear that uh, the, inc the increase um, for the user is a bit less since round trip time and other overhead um, is the ma major part of um, the round trip time here uh, or the, the user perceived time. Looking again at um, this sixth transaction at the bookstore performance. We did another setup um, and we, impl or we implemented four JPA versions. So the first one was the implementation or as uh, computer scientists, we start counting at zero. Um, the current state was the implementation on GitHub using JPQL and lazy eager fetching. The second implementation was a named entity graph solution. Who is familiar with uh, named entity graphs? Okay, only a few. Who uses JPA in their projects? Okay, more hands. So you should check the JPA 2.1 specification. Named entity graphs are a nice solution for yeah, performance problems maybe you may face. Then the third and fourth implementation were native queries with DTO projection and native queries with sub-queries and DTO projection. So I wanted to test a few things. Um, and I also want to show you code now. Um, so we, I have to, yeah. Okay, so I implement, I imp so there are a few things. Um, that was, um, can you all read it? Yeah. Um, so that was the solution zero. A query JPQL, when you refactor your app, um, also the, the IDE helps you. When you change the classes, add attributes, etc., um, the IDE helps you here. Um, the next uh, thing is the same, the same query, JPQL, but specifying an entity graph. What is an entity graph? Uh, you may know you can load your associated data lazily when you are within your database session. Otherwise you get a, a nasty exception on, and may change from lazy to eager at your um, associated uh, collections within your entities. Um, then you face another issue I explain in a minute. 
when you specify an entity graph, you say to the database within your repository, when executing this method, you, you want to load the whole graph you specify here. This graph is called purchase entity items. When we look at our entity class, uh, class there is this named entity graph here. Due to the data model having two or three layers of uh, inheritance, you have quite a deep um, object model or structure hier hierarchy. And you have a lot of associated data. And what you have to do is, in the first uh, thing, so every uh, purchase entity has an employee, which is an object, obviously, a shop, items, and customer. And since you want to have additional data from these attributes, you have to specify the next level. So when you read data from the database, you don't, so you load these four attributes and the primitive values, but you also want to load maybe within the next level other associated data. So you specify your complete model um, again here as named entity graph. Why should I do this? Yeah, it looks horrible. It's 80, 80 lines of named entity graph and also IntelliJ doesn't like it. So they have currently a bug. They cannot um, load or support you to write proper subgraphs in this named entity graph uh, solution. Why, why should I care or why should I do this? Um, in this first implementation, with, which looks really simple, super simple, I write a JPQL statement and Hibernate does all the thing for me. What, is, what happens under the hood um, is dependent on your configuration, eager, lazy, um, Hibernate generates a lot of JDBC statements to load all the data. And what, what happened in one uh, of my runs is, and that's dependent on the data model, I executed over 900 JDBC statements. And you can imagine that's costly. That takes a lot of time and you have a lot of a lot pressure on the database. In the second case with this named entity graph, that's also the solution, uh, the JPA spec um, is advising you to do. I have only two JDBC statements using JPQL and also have the possibility that I have uh, left out the joins. So I only load the data which I really need within two uh, statements. And the third and fourth implementation is, um, yeah, who likes to write such SQL statements? Ah, oh, come on, yeah, one, one or two. Um, yeah, it was fun, yeah. Um, I had the impression that I used all the classes and possibilities within a single statement uh, from this domain model. Um, it's horrible. Yeah? So when doing a refactoring, adding stuff, changing your data model, want to do a database migration, um, yeah, have fun. Yeah? Um, that's maybe not not that what we expect from, from Java. And that I, that's my motiva one of my motivation and conclusions. And that's why I spend so much time on uh, showing you this um, nice implementations. So the current um, implementation on GitHub is this JPQL with easy, uh, with lazy eager loading, a lot of JDBC statements, a performance nightmare. Uh, the other implementation with named entity graph is dependent on you, the classes and how you write them may result in an entity graph, which is also interesting to maintain, uh, 80 lines for a single query. Um, think about um, repositories where you have 
dozens or hundreds of um, queries you want to write. And then the native code looks, or the native SQL code, doesn't look that good. Um, what we experienced, so uh, we uh, shrank down the experiment duration from 6 hours to 45 minutes, and still had 8,000 requests. What we see in our in initial setup is for um, the, the JPA case, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, only JPA values, is that on average we need a second to execute it. Uh, we had around about 50% CPU utilization, so a lot of pressure uh, on the machine. Uh, with MicroStream it was under 10%. Um, and the performance increase was quite nice. Uh, and that was uh, the, the, only, uh, the only experiment I performed where microstreams were faster than a thousand times. Um, but when you look at uh, CPU utilization and what M Marcus said yesterday um, in his talk, um, it's obvious here that when you transfer your application in the cloud or wherever you like, that you save resources, uh, energy or cost or whatever you like to save. Um, and the other cases are, um, so the named entity graph solution is still okay. Um, it's an improvement. Um, what really performed nicely is uh, the DTO projection and native query. One thing I missed to explain is, uh, going back to code, um, is that I implemented a DTO here um, and only included primitive values which are important for my transaction. In the other cases, I load the whole uh, object model. That's also important. Here I'm reading a few bytes and in the other case I'm reading um, kil kilobytes or still megabytes. And the last query was, um, yeah, um, one thing which interested me and I wanted to share with you. Subqueries are also for SQL, maybe not the most performant way to perform this. Uh, different visualization for um, for the same same data. Uh, so the native query with DTO projection is still fine, and MicroStream. So we executed it, yeah, believe me, uh, but you can't see uh, the box of the box plot. Wow. Um, thanks to the first implementation here. Why I stress this so much and implemented four different versions? Um, I ask myself, I'm preparing for this talk, um, is it hard to get JPA right? And I talked to a colleague, I, in... In my free time, I work for a, for a software consultancy and uh, a colleague of mine explained uh, or explained me a situation and said, we get a lazy init exception in production. And the only thing to fix it was going from lazy to eager. Um, and then we had the problem that uh, CPU utilization and the uh, response times increased. So s solving one JPA problem um, may result in another when not being aware that things like named entity graph, uh, DTO projection, etc., cetera, um, are nice to reduce the pressure on the database. So what are hurdles in JPA? Lazy versus eager loading. Hopefully you all know the difference. N plus one performance problem when using uh, eager. Am I in a database session or do I lost the context already and not and then I'm not able to lazily load uh, data? I mean, do, uh, do uh, so is there a transaction context currently? Open session in view for all of you who use Spring Boot, that's enabled by default. Um, also quite nice, there is um, a discussion if this is a pattern or anti-pattern. 
Um, and the most important problem is uh, fixing performance issues in production is quite challenging si since some of these aspects influence each other. And you have sometimes interference of problems running out of um, database connections in, in this JPA case. So hard to get JPA right is maybe a common problem. But I wrap this up in the end. Um, another thing is I want to discuss one of the uh, wholesale supplier transaction stock level. The microstream case is um, quite fast. I use the streams API uh, and filter, um, search for my, uh, my, my stock entity and check the amount. In the checkist case, I have a huge hash map, um, a defragmented data model. Uh, please read the details in the paper. Um, I want to skip this since I think check is not, not an option. Um, and the last uh, thing is here in JPA, due to the data model, I had to perform joins and joins are costly. So that are the three uh, things here I want to stress. So in this case, also filtering uh, is quite, uh, quite fast. To answer my three questions, um, I'm running a bit out of time, but I think I can uh, manage it. Microstream versus JPA. Is it really proven to be a thousand times faster than Hibernate? We experienced um, significant speed ups, but it's highly dependent on the nature of the query. Um, since in this transaction, we had a lot of complex joins. You saw the native SQL statement. Um, and in the, uh, uh, in the microstream case, I can use uh, the Java Streams API. In other cases, microstream is still tens or hundred times uh, faster. Uh, check is not an option. As said, check is what was always slower um, than the JPA case. Um, MS uh, Sync, our own wholesale supplier Im implementation, was also a few hundred times faster for some of the transactions. And other cases also experienced the speed up. So MicroStream was uh, in all settings every time faster than the JPA uh, pendant. Um, the user perceived performance is, from my point of view, when talking about latency, um, interesting and dependent on the com computation you perform. Scheduling network latency may have a major issue, a uh, major influence, but still um, you save money on, on the application server. And microstream is still sometimes 50% faster. And that might be important for your use case dependent on the requirements. Concurrency control, I want to introduce shortly a structured entity relationship model. Um, one of our professors in, in Bamberg did this uh, during his PhD. And the idea is to have uh, independent objects on the one side and then having dependent objects um, from left to right. Why should I care about this? So SAP uh, use, uses this for uh, modeling their data model. Um, and what we did, we uh, used this for nesting locks um, to avoid deadlocks running in concurrency issues. Um, how does this look like? So we have several, or we had several synchronized blocks um, nested and going as um, introduced by the domain model from left to right when uh, different uh, data is needed. Um, what is interesting, there was also a question yesterday, um, when you want to 
uh, store your data model um, at the beginning we thought yeah we can store from ever uh, from every thread uh, concurrently the data model but you have to uh, to lock this I think also in the latest version um, to store it so a single thread can um, can write changes uh, to disk and the usage uh, scenarios where we see uh, microstream especially suited um, is for um, mostly immutable data models that's a no-brainer having concurrent uh, data access and immutable data is n not a big issue for Java and cloud native microservices where you have a uh, single service and every service has its own data solution that's also a perfect fit you do not have to replicate your data um, and where we see microstream a perfect fit is for Java developers there is um, there is no no risk of introducing side effects by another framework technology like JPA and relational databases where we see the most room for improvement is concurrency control Marcus said yesterday and I wrote this on the slide to not forget it you have to care for concurrency um, and I think that's uh, one of the, the major um, things I, I want to share uh, today um, so low-level synchronization I'm not sure if some somebody does this in production low-level synchronization wait notify and synchronized um, I think it's fun but I'm, I'm not sure if I want to do this in production um, and what I I'm looking forward and I talked to to Florian is optimistic locking approaches and I, s I think they are currently in production and testing concurrent code is challenging so we lecture a bachelor course um, and the only thing we came up with testing is using JC stress an open JDK tool where you can brute force with different JVM settings your code um, and then you get a nice dashboard currently I think they have 32 JVM configurations and several optimization parameters and then you um, execute your function mil millions um, of times and when everything is green you have no guarantee that your code is fine but you might be a bit more confident uh, that's quite interesting so I can highly recommend JC stress um, giving a try and having a look what I th think is beneficial for future work on comparing microstream to other um, solution um, is to build a pipeline and test new releases against other persistent solutions that might be might be quite interesting and um, what I I'm looking forward is to have the time to test the cluster feature uh, they implemented threats to validity what we missed so far is uh, no lazy references uh, but personally when comparing this with JPA I really like the design decision that you have to be explicit um, writing lazy or or using lazy and then this uh, generic uh, syntax um, being explicit precise and then you are not running in the same issues as in JPA cases where you change one attribute of uh, annotation and run into performance issues like when changing lazy to eager we had no scaling of instances there is currently a cluster mode since I think microstream 7 and the same holds true for our wholesale supplier application that's not 100% objective we implemented it within our research group um, but there might be also bugs in our implementation and the used experimental setup um, might be interesting to, to run it in the cloud run it on raspberries um, uh, to to see how microstream performs against JPA 
to sum up, general statement. Um, after working a few months on, on different implementations, I think, and um, we use it currently in research prototypes, MicroStream isn't obviously an alternative to Hibernate and can boost performance. But as always, it depends on the use case. So I think there are um, use cases which are easily doable without additional effort with MicroStream. And there are other use cases where you have to spend um, intellectual capacity, time, and uh, joy uh, in implementing a, a proper solution. The major benefit um, is staying in the Java universe without having an impedance mismatch with other technologies, and in particular with different database solutions and their optimizations. So I lecture several master courses at the university, and the biggest problem is for most of my students to implement proper uh, JPA inheritance, implement uh, proper queries, and getting the concept of lazy and eager loading right. Um, and the major drawback or challenge, yeah, phrase it as you like, is the concurrency control capabilities currently. Um, so it's hard uh, to, to, to write synchronized code, um, but it makes super fun. Yeah? So I don't see it as a drawback. Um, what we did in our implementation, why we failed the first time, is we spread our synchronized logic across cl classes. And in the, in the second run, we centralized all the concurrent um, code within a single class. And then there was, uh, it was quite clear how our access patterns, uh, how does the synchronized blocks nest, um, etc. So this might ease your life, but does not uh, overcome the general uh, challenge of concurrency control. And that's it from my side. Any questions? Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah, so in the in the JPA case, um, most concurrency problems or uh, concurrent concurrent data access is done by the database management system. Um, in the microstream case, you have to care um, to when you store or retrieve data, you have to care for or thinking about um, how are the access paths, and you have to synchronize then writes for example yeah yeah so th so the question was concurrency control can i use annotations or anything structured for this um yeah so um, I think it's worth learning um, low-level concurrency stuff. Um, it's not only MicroStream, it's also Spring Boot who hides um, concurrency, concurrent data access, whatever, within the, the middleware implementation. And I think it's, it's good for a Java developer to have a, you are quite some knowledge on, on concurrency problems and how to solve it, how to implement thread-safe code, yeah. And this structured approach helped a lot. Uh, so that was the game changer.
so the question was where, where, where was the data in the JPA case and in the microstream case? So we had the whole microstream data in RAM. Um, we had no lazy references. We, I think we had a few million objects and I think it was five to eight gigabytes, um, five million objects roundabout. And in the uh, JPA case, I, we had a Postgres running in a container and the cache between. And the cache was hot. Yeah. So we read data from, from this EH cache um, and don't have to load data from hard disk, I would assume. Yeah. Yeah. But, but then a different as net naturally uh, another another component yeah to access yeah yeah um and that's also one thing so um remark was database uh, was on the same machine as said on h90 we had um the app and then the postgres um, running in, in separate containers connected via Docker network. Um, but still, yeah, there was no, no outbound to another physical machine. Yeah. And that would also, uh, increase, increase the, the, the performance of microstream. Yeah. When, when using, um, so when having a local app and using a cloud database, yeah, I think microstream performs a few things up. 10,000 times faster than, but that's, I think that's the most optimized setting you can have for JPA. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but still in these cases, yeah. They, they performed quite well. So a friend of mine uh, told me, and then I believe we are maybe not all engineers, uh, they had an application running in AWS cloud in Frankfurt, and the database ran in Ireland. Yeah? Uh, and he, he complained why the app is so slow. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And there are also numbers for uh, utilization, memory consumption, etc. But I wanted to pick one, one transaction and going deep and not having a, a broad set without um, conclusions. Any other questions? If not, you can also ask me, or if you have general questions to the, to the microstream guys, go to the microstream guys. Other questions? Then I think um, you did it and you are ready for the exhibition. 